47 years ago, on April 5, 1975, a manned Soyuz 18 spacecraft was launched at the Baikonur Cosmodrome to carry an expedition to the Salyut 4 orbital station. However, there was a malfunction during separation of the second and third stages of the rocket. The spacecraft separated from the launcher and made an emergency landing. This is a continuation of a past video, in which I have already started to talk about the interesting history of the Soyuz 18 spacecraft. Vasily Lazarev, describing his sensations at that moment, compared them to a car running straight over his chest. Lazarev recalled, once, after carrying a load of 10G on a centrifuge, I drew the attention of the doctor accompanying me to the many red dots covering the back of the tester who was being spun before me. The doctor calmly replied, those are small blood vessels bursting. You have the same thing on your back. But when Soyuz 18 flew to Earth, the crew was hit with 20G of G-force. Exactly how much weight the astronauts felt at the peak is not known. Vasily Lazarev said that experts, parsing telemetry, noted that for several seconds it rose to an insane 26G. At this point, the astronauts' vision failed and a cardiac arrest was recorded. On Earth, the specialists did not have a complete picture of what was happening, but even without that, many had added gray hairs. The astronauts regained consciousness when the parachute system went off. The trained bodies withstood the unthinkable overloads, even if they lasted a little longer, and the crew of the Soyuz 18 would not have survived. The descent capsule of the Soyuz landed in Altai, in a remote snow-covered area at an altitude of about 1,200 meters on a precipitous mountainside called Termok 3, having hooked one parachute strand on a large tree 2 meters from the abyss. The cosmonauts escaped death for the second time, falling into the mountain abyss. Lazarev and Makarov managed to evacuate themselves from the descent capsule, took off their suits, changed into TZK-10 suits and built a fire on a piece of heat shield that had been detached from the capsule. Both were lifted aboard the helicopter only the next day, with the life of the rescuers themselves in danger, so difficult were the conditions of the terrain. Cosmonauts Vasily Lazarev and Oleg Makarov train in the Black Sea. The Rage of the Designer Glushko the commander of the ship, Vasily Lazarev, said that when he came to his senses, he saw that the flight engineer was saying something to him. But he could not understand what his partner was saying, his hearing was also temporarily switched off. The crew tried to contact the mission control center to find out where the descent vehicle would land. But there was no connection. Or rather, the astronauts could not hear the MCC, but the MCC could hear perfectly well what was being said on board. Oleg, where are we landing? Lazarev asked. To China or the Pacific, joked the flight engineer, and then described what happened in glowing Russian terms, very unflatteringly, about the work of the engines of the second stage. Makarov did not know that general designer Valentin Glushko heard his words. Hearing the flight engineer's criticism, Glushko went stained, ordered to turn off the broadcast and loudly promised that Makarov would never fly into space again. The jump into space itself took just over four minutes, and together with the landing, the entire flight lasted less than 22 minutes. But the adventures of the crew continued. Makarov did not talk about China and the Pacific for nothing. The fact is that an emergency landing in case of failure of the second stage should have happened in Altai, or, if unlucky, in China, with which the USSR had very difficult relations at the time. In the event of a third stage failure, the cosmonauts would swim in the ocean. As a result, the lesser of the evils happened Soyuz 18 in a remote, inaccessible area southwest of Gorno-Altiysk, but on Soviet territory. But at the moment of landing, Lazarev and Makarov were again threatened with death. According to the instructions, the crew should have shot off the parachute after landing. However, the rescuers had their own view of the situation. During various experiments, the crew noticed that upon landing in a mountainous area, the descent module could easily roll down a slope with the most unfortunate consequences. Therefore, the Soyuz 18 crew was given an unofficial recommendation, if anything happens, first look around and only then shoot your parachute. This advice also saved the astronauts. When they got out, they found that the descent vehicle was on a hillside, 150 meters from the abyss, and does not roll down only because the parachute is tightly entangled in the treetops. 
The only thing funny about all this was the name of the mountain on which the space explorers found themselves, Termok 3. There was thick snow at the landing site, the temperature was minus 7, and the cosmonauts had to survive in the literal sense of the word. The rescuers could not approach Lazarev and Makarov. The first to reach them was a geologist who landed from the helicopter of the geological party. However, the helicopter was not able to lift the cosmonauts up. The regular rescue party, storming Termok 3, fell under an avalanche, and they had to be rescued, fortunately, no casualties were sustained. The next day one of the Air Force helicopters, which was not part of the official rescue team, managed at its own risk to lift the cosmonauts and geologists and evacuate them to a safe area. Vasily Lazarev, Wright, and Oleg Makarov, left, on the grounds of the Moscow Kremlin. Reduced flight, reduced awards. There could be no complaints about the actions of the cosmonauts, their behavior cannot be called anything but heroic. But in the Soviet Union it was not customary to report on space mishaps, the media only received information about those cases that could not be concealed at all. Veterans of the Soviet press remember that on April 5, 1975, journalists were expelled from Baikonur immediately after it became clear that something went wrong. The only report on the incident in the Soviet media appeared only on May 8 and was hidden in the inside pages of the newspapers. On April 5, 1975 a launch vehicle with a manned Soyuz spacecraft was launched to continue experiments together with the Salyut 4 station. Aboard the spacecraft there was a crew of heroes of the Soviet Union cosmonauts Vasily Lazarev and Oleg Makarov. In the third stage of the spacecraft there was a deviation of the parameters of motion of the launch vehicle from the design values, and the automatic device commanded to terminate further flight according to the program and the separation of the spacecraft to return to Earth. The descent vehicle made a soft landing southwest of gorno -Eltiysk. The search and rescue service ensured delivery of the cosmonauts to the spaceport. The well-being of comrades VG Lazarev and OG Makarov is good. After that, the silence lasted another eight years, until some of the details of the incident were allowed to write Krishnaya Zvezda. The cosmonauts were rewarded for their flight, but in a truncated version according to the established order in the USSR, the second flight was rewarded with the Gold Star of Hero of the Soviet Union and the Order of Lenin, but Lazarev and Makarov were only awarded the Order of Lenin for heroism. And the number of the wrecked Soyuz 18 was taken away from it and given to the next ship. And so it remained in history under the strange name of Soyuz 18-1. Pilot cosmonaut of the USSR Oleg Makarov. The overload was not in vain. The cosmonauts themselves believed that they had done nothing heroic and regretted only that the flight had failed. It was officially stated that the terrible overload had no effect on the astronauts' health. Indeed, at first it seemed so, both Lazarev and Makarov remained in the squadron. But then it turned out that the ordeal was not in vain, the cosmonauts began to get sick, one by one. Hero of the Soviet Union, pilot cosmonaut of the USSR Vasily Lazarev in the natural history classroom, studying the possibilities of multi-zone imaging. The training center for Soviet cosmonauts in Star City. Makarov, who was five years younger, stayed in formation longer, despite threats from designer Glushko, he still flew into space twice more, on the Soyuz 27 and Soyuz T3. By the way, during the launch of Soyuz T3, the commander of the backup crew was Vasily Lazarev, who escorted his longtime partner into space. Lazarev himself was not destined to fly to the stars anymore. In 1985, he was dismissed from the armed forces to the reserve and expelled from the cosmonaut corps due to poor health. He died on December 31, 1990, at the age of 62. After leaving the cosmonaut corps, Oleg Makarov experienced heart problems so serious that he underwent surgery in 1998. But he could not fully recover. On May 28, 2003, he died of a heart attack at age 70. And the dramatic story of their flight in 1975, which easily eclipses the plot of Hollywood's gravity, to this day remains unknown to most. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.